that's pretty much where the drinking started, and everybody was partying day and night. And uh, that's where eventually I met Richard Hell. Bob Quine, the guitarist in the band, saw my um, ad in the paper, called me up. I went down to, um, I forget what the name of, uh, Daily Planet Studios, I think it was, that was in the basement. And the, I, at the time, thought that Bob was Richard because Bob was pretty much the one that was conducting the, the, um, the rehearsal of the audition. And, um, you know, he's showing me the songs and this and that. And, you know, I'm playing along with them, and I notice that Mark has a bottle of vodka, and he's, you know, exactly. taking a hit now and then, and then he's throwing up behind the drums. And I'm like, okay, well, man, yeah, that's cool. Then I look over, and the two, two women that were with Mark started fighting. You know, this is like all within the course of, I guess, a half hour, 45 minutes of me being there. I'm thinking, this is a pretty cool band, <laughs> you know? I was a child who wanted all In a lot of ways, Richard Hill and the Voidos were kind of the perfect punk band the quintessential punk band. The Voidoids were really a um, solidification of the influence of the new music. They really put it into perspective that once you heard it, you couldn't say this was shit. You had to listen to it and say, well, these guys are, are way talented. They seemed a little bit more serious and more dark, and the topics were like, oh, uh, that he wrote about were such a heartfelt, personal things. They were intense, you know, focused. The Voidoids were really something else, you know. They seemed to have that kind of punk ethos, but had this whole kind of wacky jazz rock kind of thing going on. And they were doing something that was like kind of um, a complicated music. And it wasn't bullshit. You know, all of us came from, you know, slightly different musical backgrounds and, 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 and visions. And um, it, it all came together when the four of us played together somehow. I mean, it was, it was inexplain, unexplainable. It really was. Um, and Mark was kind of the, the engine behind that. Mark Bell, a great, great, great drummer. And Robert Quine, you know, it was one of those guitarists who, for me, you know, it was like seeing Hendrix for the first time. He was unique, innovative, and... Uh... It's just uh, from the planet Mars, you know, his, his style. And Ivan was the rhythmic backbone of it, but they, uh, he'd play lead too. So he had two great guitar players. Richard was, you know, high and, you know, sat there sleeping all the time, I thought. God, he's tired. <laughs> and then and, and after a while, I realized that he was Richard and, you know, and he was kind of channeling through Bob um, what we should all be doing. Mark was a rocker. I totally identify with him because he was a rocker. These other guys were coming from a different place musically that, I mean, to be honest, before I joined this band, I just, you know, kind of had nothing to do with. you got to remember, we were very young basically in our early 20s. Ivan was probably 19 years old. There, there seemed to be some kind of um, tension. Well, you know, Richard and I were different people. He came from Kentucky, I come from New York. He liked drugging, I liked drinking. Well, he would have a few drinks too, but the drug of his preference was dope. And uh, those are two different worlds. But I'll tell you one thing, he was a great songwriter, he influenced the English punk scene with the safety pins and the ripped shirt. Malcolm came to New York, Malcolm McLaren, the Sex Pistols manager, took that image, brought it back to England, and that whole scene there picked up on it. And uh, I respect him for that. But uh, we just didn't click, we just didn't get along, it's life, you know? Well, Terry York uh, had an independent uh, record label, and uh, he wanted us bad. He approached Richard and said, well, like, I'd like to put a single out with, of you. It's very angst sounding. I mean, it's, it's very kind of raw in, in that the band had only really been together for five or six months. And then, I mean, and you can hear it in, in you know, the, the playing and the execution of the songs. The EP was great. I liked it a lot. 5,000 copies were sold out immediately, which led us to be signed to Cy Records. They were brought to me by my former partner, Richard Goderup, who had signed them to his production company, and they were signed to, to Sire as one of the first, you know, punk bands that uh, that we had on the label. We filmed the Voidoid section of the Blank Generation movie in CBGB's while we were mixing the album Blank Generation. Richard Hell played the main character in the movie, and uh, what was good, Andy Warhol had a uh, cameo appearance in it.
Before the record came out in October of 77, uh, we were asked by the Clash to tour with them. We were all piled into um, this small station wagon to travel. I mean, some like eight of us. I mean, you know, the, the, the road manager, us, and somebody else. I mean, in for these long, long drives. The the spitting was really at its height at that point. Bob Quine got spit on so much he jumped off the stage and started swinging his guitar at, at people. So uh, none of us liked it. it. It isn't cool. From where I come from, somebody spits on you. You you, you sock them in the fucking mouth. I, I think one of the things that we forget about that that time, or that that people deliberately forget about that time, is no one was making money. The times were tough. When we got back from the Clash tour uh, in New York. We had no money. Richard didn't want to work. I wanted to work. I wanted to be in a touring recording band. There was no fucking money. What was I supposed to do? Eat dog food all the time, which I did. Mark certainly was was never a problem, and uh, Quine, and uh, you know, even Ivan. But um, you know, R Richard uh, was the most difficult member. Of, of, of the band. And which led to um, Mark leaving the band because he wanted to be in the band that worked. That made sense. We were each an important part of the group. I don't like to use the word important, but you know, uh, we were a unit. And uh, after a while, the group did dissolve. I left first, then Ivan. And after that, it wasn't the same. I thought that the band was over. Like, once again, what bonded the, the Vortoids was chemistry. That's what made that whole thing work. I mean, as. <clears throat> as a creative entity, you know? It's like, I mean, the stuff we came up with was, you know, like nothing else, it was great. I mean, granted, there were songs after that, but none of them were on the par and level of that one record that we did. That shit should, should have just torn a new asshole in the, in the, in the surface of, you know, in the, in the landscape of music, that, 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 uh, that record. But uh, not to be.